Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. This video is gonna be the first and many that we do on food preservation. Now, we're not gonna get into a whole lot of details in this video, but what I do want you to do is just enjoy and soak up the wisdom of Papa Sammy as he goes back 80, 100, and 120 years in different methods and techniques that they used when they didn't have electricity, they didn't have canning machines, high pressure machines, any of that, but they were able to preserve their food and feed their families. So he's just gonna give us a little history into that. He's gonna open up some areas for discussion. I hope you guys enjoy it. It was a joy to film my dad talking about these things. We went back three generations while we were discussing this. So that's amazing information. I hope that it blesses you. Please make sure to comment like and subscribe you guys have a blessed day all right football sammy how would you store fresh eggs you can pick them or you can what do you call it water water uh water bathe them water yeah now how would you water bathe what what is that technique you, you use a little lime and water and, and put your eggs in it make sure i forgot your recipe you can get it on youtube okay or you can look it up and put it in yours yeah i probably uh, that and you take and pick it and let the eggs soak in it. And a year later, they just get like the day you put them in there. Okay. Take them out and use them. Now, let me ask you, I have fresh eggs. So we're raising our own chickens. We get fresh eggs. There is a debate whether or not you should rinse rinse off the, the coating on the egg and refrigerate them first or just put them in the, in the water bath as they are as you get them out of the coop. That's Do you have an opinion? Person. A lot of people wash them. Put them in there, or you can put them in as is. But it wouldn't hurt either way. Huh? Would it hurt either way? I heard if you wash off the film, you allow bacteria to seep in. Yeah, and, and you also get a strong lime taste. Off the lime water, you're pickling them, uh, you, you're pickling them with. Okay. okay, Papa Sammy, what would you use? What is the ratio of lime to water? One quart of water would be one ounce. A pickling lime. All right, so it's pickling lime, not quick lime. Picking lime, yeah. You'll poison yourself, right, if you use the wrong kind of lime? Well, they make you, yeah, make you lose blood from the stomach. <laughs> okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so that's how you would... Um... And you've got to preserve the egg for, what, a year? Because they're not boiled. They come straight from the hen to the lime. That's right. All these. Yeah. Pickled eggs, you put your finger, you boil them, put them in vinegar and seasoning. There's a difference. There is a difference. Okay, so that's talk about storage of eggs. Tell everybody what my grandmother, who would be well over 100 years old if she was still alive today, guys. Tell everybody what, what Grandma Woods would have done to seal jars back in the day as she was jarring and canning. How did they do it without all this expensive equipment? There were a half dozen ways. If you didn't have the jars and the lids, Mason jars have been around a long time. Yes, yeah, since the 1800s. Yeah. So if you didn't have the lids, she would actually take people that say bourbon nowadays, moonshine back then, and soak a rag in it, and uh, take a little egg white and mix it with the bourbon, and soak the rag, put it over the jar, and make sure it's sealed down tight and let it dry. Oh, wow. Uh, like a coating, literally coating well, it, the... It's not touching the food. No, but it, it makes a, a sealed over that yeah, rag. But that is not a real good thing to do. No, but in a pinch. Well, yeah, it's better than starving. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, so how would... Because I called you last night because I told you I wanted to start canning my food, but I did not want to spend that amount of money on a high-pressure canner. Like, that's, mm -hmm. out of the, that's out of the world. You don't have to. A pressure cooker, canning pressure cooker cooks the food. You can take you a big aluminum pot, put your rag in the bottom of it where the jar's not sitting straight down on the burner and crack. Fill it half full of water up to about four or five inches under the top of the jar. Set it on the stove, put a lid on it, and let it boil. Let it boil 30, 40, 45 minutes. And then you ease it out, put the lid on it, and just let it sit there. And when the lid pops down, it's sealed. You, you just can your stuff. You just can your stuff. So, guys, that that is a uh, sustainable, economical way. Now, somebody is in, inevitably going to say the word botulism in this conversation. 
How do you know that's safe? Well, you're looking at my 80 year old dad. So I'm gonna tell you guys, this is how my great grandmother rushing, my grandmother Woods, this is how they canned foods for generations in my family. And you see my father is sitting in front of me. He's alive, I guarantee at some point in my 47 years, Grandma Woods probably opened up something she had canned and fed it to me. Believe it or not, she would open it up. If it looked funny, she'd tell Daddy smell it, which, <laughs> well, anyway, he would smell it. Had any odor at all, it went. It went, so they- now, And now she opened it up, there's a little fuzz on it, a little bacteria. There was no way to test it. Was it good bacteria? Right. Or was it botulism? They don't know. It went. Right. Like we can smell it as it's turning, but could we decipher, like you said, between penicillin or botulism? Absolutely not. You need scientific materials yeah. for that. Right. All right. So is there any other food preservation techniques you can think of? What can you can? How about that? That's a great I question. Can anything. Chicken, pork, beef, uh, anything. Rabbit. Okay, yeah, because, okay, so we have rabbit, quail, and chicken. Um, I've even heard people talking about, like, boiling down the bones of the carcasses of any of those types of animals. Yeah, yeah make bone, yeah. Making bone broth. You can can bone broth, yeah, correct? it's good to drink, too. Yeah, it is good to drink. And you can actually use that, open up that can and use that broth to start off all your soups and your stews and stuff like that through the winter and the spring to give yourself back some vitamins. Now, if you're going to boil the bones, crack them and let the marrow come out. Yeah, let the marrow come out. Yeah. Now, you yeah. were the one that pointed out to me that rabbit meat, the only place in a rabbit you can find bone marrow that you can actually get out is the back legs. Yeah. And it's not a lot of it. No. You'll starve to death there on rabbit. There might be some of the other bones, but it's... It's not worth even trying to get them out. No. They're so tiny. So, guys, you need to just think through some of the animals you have on your property. Think about ways that you can start making your own bone broth. When they're wanting to make a bone broth, Dad, what do they just need to do? Rapid boil for hours? No, I crack the bones up and break them up a little bit. Uh, throw them in the hot water with your salt, your pepper, your whatever seasoning or, or uh, onions, whatever you want in your broth. Yeah. And you let it cook down for about 35, 45 minutes, boil. And bottle it, can it, and put it up. Okay. But not with the bones? No. Now, okay. You can make mashed potatoes with that. You, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can cook your beans, your peas corn in that bone broth it is delicious other than canning uh drop all smoke he has a big smokehouse and we get hang his pork and stuff and smoke it now my uncle my mama's brother had a big wooden barrel behind the door in the kitchen big pitch five gallon drum he put a layer of salt and a layer of fresh pork a layer of salt all the way to the top of that barrel and after about three or four or five six weeks He'd go in and take it out, knock the salt off of it, slice what he wanted, ain't, ain't really to cook. And she'd take it over there to the pump, and pump it up, wash all the salt off she could, and she'd put it in there fry. That's how they did their pork. Okay, so when you're talking about salting, what types of salt could we use in today? Because I mean, some salt has iodine in salt, it. Regular salt. Can we use salt with iodine though? Yeah, iodine is, it, 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 uh, it's a cure for uh, the garters. People used to have them big garters under their neck. Oh, yeah. That was like a fire guy. Oh, I didn't know. When they started putting, it was common when I was a kid, but now you never It's see not, it. right. Like scurvy. Scurvy That's was right. common and when you were a kid because right. people didn't get enough fruits and vegetables well, in the winter. Well, could dry. But we never dried beef. It just wasn't worth it. No. My grandmother, they they fed babies what they cooked. So they <laughs> they learned how to mash everything up. You don't, I know, they didn't mash it up, they chewed it up. They chewed it up and fed them to the babies. Grandma used to chew it up, put it in a spoon, and give it to the baby. Yeah. Now I know everybody's gonna cringe hearing that, but I mean, it's, it's better than buying your baby food from China when they've already found several times now toxic chemicals and heavy metals in that baby food. That's right. So come on everybody, we, like I, I say it all the time, we can do this as a community, as a state, as a country and as a world, we can do this better. There's knowledge. Go talk to somebody that's over the age of 70, like my dad. Look him up, Papa Sammy and Alibug, YouTube. Look him up. He's got information. You guys have a blessed day.